1995, long before the runaway box office success of Rush Hour and The Matrix, visionary director Steve Wang was making martial arts movie history. Restricted by a modest $3.5 million budget and a grueling production schedule of only six and a half weeks, Steve worked tirelessly for up to 22 hours a day with ace fight choreographer Koichi Sakamoto and his alpha stunt team to create the first truly dynamic, exciting, and technically accomplished martial arts action adventure ever produced by a Hollywood studio. The movie is Drive, starring action superstar Mark Dacascos and live wire comedy talent Kadeem Hardison. What follows is a candid behind the scenes look at the people responsible for one of the most genuinely groundbreaking but largely undiscovered classics of modern action cinema. Born in Taiwan, Drive director Steve Wang grew up on a staple diet of kung fu flicks, both homegrown and imported from Hong Kong and Japan. And although he immigrated to the United States at the age of nine, his interest in the genre continued into adulthood. His first movie, Kung Fu Rascals, which unbelievably Steve made for a mere $40,000, is a remarkable debut project and a popular cult hit in many countries. The fluid, high-energy fight sequences in Guyver 2, Dark Hero, further consolidated his reputation with action fans upon its release in 1994. Steve has a distinguished background in conceptual artistry and special makeup effects, having previously worked with Academy Award winners Stan Winston, Rick Baker and Dick Smith. Steve has sculpted creatures for such mainstream cinematic favorites as Gremlins, Godzilla, and Alien Resurrection. His highly developed sense of visual perception gives Steve a head start over many directors when it comes to the development and execution of high-impact fight action. Producer Mike Leahy recalls how Steve came to be involved in the Drive project. I met Steve Wang through a mutual friend of ours where he showed me a demo reel of some of the work that he'd done in the past. And immediately I knew I had to work with him on something. And we had an opportunity to go to Romania and check out some locations for a sequel to Fist of the North Star. And we realized that wasn't kind of going to fit our timeline, but another script fell into our laps called Drive, which Scott Phillips wrote. And we took that and adapted it to some of the important aspects that Steve wanted in the film, namely Mark Dacascos. Um, who plays Toby Wong, and um, looking for someone that can have some comedy to bounce off of, and we thought of Kadeem. He'd just done Vampire in Brooklyn, and I don't know if you've seen that film, but he's great in it. I mean, you know, he outshines Eddie Murphy. And uh, Dry fell, fell in our lap, and we went off to, uh, to now make this Hong Kong epic in uh, Lancaster, California. <laughs> What attracted me about Drive was that I felt it had very strong characters. It had some really, a lot of neat things going for it, character-wise, and, and that it was a road movie. I really loved that fact that it was a quirky road movie. The dialogue was snappy, it was funny, there was some really, really neat stuff in it. But overall, the structure of the film and the action style wasn't really what I wanted to do. It was more of a car chase, gun, gun battle kind of movie. 
So uh, I asked him, I said, well, I'll do this film if uh, you let me rewrite the action sequences to tailor more my taste, you know? And they said, yeah, sure, go ahead. There was like a, a fair amount of collaboration between me and Steve on the, on the, the final script. We went through a bunch of drafts together. Uh, in some cases, we'd just sit down and work out stuff together. In other cases, Steve would work on things, notes, or actually go over the draft and, and then give it to me, and I'd, I'd work on it again. Like the, uh, the gravel yard fight in the original script was this running gun battle in Land Rovers that was just way too much for the, for the budget and the, the time that we had. And uh, ultimately, I think it, it, it came out better just having more martial arts action in it. Two words come to mind when I think of Drive. Singular vision. It was a beautiful thing when we all got together at my house for dinner one night in prep, where we all sat down and said, what are we making here? And, uh, and everybody across the table, Mark, Kadeem, Steve, and I, it was a singular vision. We were going to take this money, and it wasn't a lot of money. We were going to take this money and make the kick-ass Hong Kong movie uh, with English uh, as the premier language. It was just a six and a half week rush. I mean, I was tired basically the whole time. After the first day, I was tired the whole month and a half. But I've never been so happy and excited on a project consistently all the way through, you know? And I've never gotten so beat up before in my life. But I was always happy to get beat up, you know? Because I would see dailies the following day and go, man, this is working. It was a script that, was, uh, that probably would have never made it to me. But my agent at the time, they knew I'd been talking about Hong Kong and action and, and animation and just the kind of things I talked about wanting to do as an actor. They sent me this little script that they said was going to be like, you know, a karate style. Blah, blah, blah. And I read it and I liked the character and there were things I could relate to and I saw places where I could definitely boost it up a little bit comedy wise, but I didn't see, you know, on the paper, you can't read action, you can't read how it's going to look. So they said, if you like it, we'll set up a meeting with the director. Okay. And I met Steve Wang, and, uh, and actually I think first, before I met him, I got, they sent me tapes of what he had done. They sent me uh, Kung Fu Rascals and Guyver. And then after seeing that, I was like, oh, I definitely want to meet this guy. You telling me that this guy it lives in America? I got to meet him. For me, I've never set out to be an art filmmaker. You know, I've never wanted to go out and say, you know what, I'm going to make Dances with Wolves, or although I would personally would love to have done a film like that. Um, my, my main goal as a, a filmmaker, at least for now, is that I want to entertain people. I want to be able to take them away from their, their homes for two hours or video or whatever and to be able to just entertain the shit out of them. And the one thing that Drive proved to me was that I had the ability to do that. And that really meant a lot to me because early on from the early test screenings up till the final version of the film, the screening was, was consistent all the way through. Every single time, the audience loved it. They were howling, they were cheering, laughing through the, through the entire film. The, re the reactions were phenomenal. I've never made a film that got that kind of reaction. Walking on Drive as a stunt fight coordinator was uh, almost like uh, someone give you a playground, you know, play, do whatever you want to do. Because uh, uh, me and Steve work together very closely, and he gives me a lot of control as far as the scheduling, camera angle, uh, creativity for the fight choreography, so we all work together well. I think Drive is strongest in that it's, it's a Hong Kong style action film, so it has those elements for people who really love martial arts action. At the same time, it's got a very nice, a uh, group of characters, Mark Dacascos, Kadeem Hardison, Brittany Murphy. Um, they're all wonderful together and the energy on the screen is great. And uh, in a lot of our previous screenings, there was a great response to the interactions just for the characters. So we had a great female response to the movie. We had great uh, people who don't even watch martial arts films who I know really enjoyed this film uh, for those reasons, because they got behind the characters, they liked the comedy in it, and then the action was, you know, fantastic. 
Early on, I knew we had something special. Everybody plugged in 110% as far as, you know, working on Sundays, seventh days. I remember Steve would literally, literally, I'm not just, this isn't just a story. He would literally shoot with a crew all day long. Then we would send everybody on the first crew home and bring a second crew in, keep our main stunt guys, and Steve would work well into the evening. And sure enough, we had a call time the next morning at 7 a.m with the first crew that had gone home and slept and ate dinner and spent time with their family. And Steve would go, the next day, he would take, we'd take lunch at noon or one o'clock, he would go and sleep his 35 minutes during lunch. And I remember this, this sad, sad looking guy come stumbling, you know, the poor PA has got to go knock on the door to wake up this director that's been up 24 hours, you know, sleeping for 35 minutes. And I remember Steve showing up on the set after one lunch. You know, everyone, uh, the whole first crew has gone home, right? So they're having lunch, eating away, and Steve walks out with these big bags under his eyes, just totally lost to the world. But he was a mission, man. He had a singular vision. This is the time we have to make this movie happen from this date to this date. And he just kicked ass, you know, every moment he could. Myself, personally, I'm not a huge martial arts action fan. But watching the way this film was put together and watching the things that Steve did on set with Mark Dacascos, uh, the wire work, Mark is amazing, did, did virtually all his own stunts in this film. Uh, it was amazing to watch for anybody. The acrobatics and the dance quality of the film uh, was, is, is really exciting to watch. <laughs> Heading up the talented cast, physical genius Mark Dacascos has been learning martial arts since the age of four. Indoctrinated in the effective street art style, Wun Hop Kyun Do by his father Al Dacascos, Mark is as effective off the screen as he is on. Producer Mike Leahy vividly remembers his first introduction to Hawaii's answer to Bruce Lee. Specifically, I remember the first time meeting Mark Dacascos. We went to uh, a restaurant in, uh, in the valley. And Steve was pretty adamant about us needing to hire this guy, Mark Dacascos. And I met Mark, and he was telling a story, and at one moment he moved his hands. Uh, I'm doing it about one one hundredth of the speed that Mark moved his hands. And it was like I was sitting across from a puma that was just so delicate and so graceful and so methodic in his approach. While he's eating a hamburger, I just knew this was the guy that we needed to hire. Mark was the guy I wanted from the beginning for this movie. Because the one thing that is really hard is a lot of people in Hollywood, you know, the, the guys who make the big movies, you know, they don't understand this. And that is, it's really hard to cast somebody who can do the acting, give you the performance, who can also do the action that is required in this kind of movie without looking like they've been doubled every five seconds. I love to train in martial arts. I was a Hawaiian boy spending most of my teen years in Hamburg, Germany, and my sanctuary was in the Kung Fu school. I was a foreigner, and although I had a lot of good friends, Kung Fu and Jackie Chan was a huge influence in my life. Matter of fact, when I was 17, I, I moved to Taiwan for six months and I studied martial arts there and I actually got to meet Jackie Chan when I was 17 years old. He was a huge influence and I think Jackie Chan was the one that inspired me to really get into gymnastics and do flips and all that. Matter of fact, I attribute myself um, almost breaking my back to a Jackie Chan film. <laughs> I, in, one, in, in, in one of the movies I saw him do, he, uh, he ran up something and did a backflip. And I thought, oh, that looks so cool and he does it so well. I don't know if it's, it doesn't, it, you know, he, he made it look like it was not that hard. So I went back to our Kung Fu school and the ceilings were only, I don't know, maybe nine, nine and a half feet high, 10 feet high. And there was this B 